the big guy, uh, and that would be uh, Delegate Mike Hornby. He is the owner of said radio and TV station that was Blitzkrieg earlier this week. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Maria. Good morning. And, and Mike, where were you on Monday when we need you the most? <laughs> Down there, high, will you, in, hiding your head in the in sand in Charleston. Getting notifications <laughs> of every message that was coming through. So my phone was blowing up. Um, it was nuts. And, and Mike and I were trying to follow as much as we could. But unfortunately, we were in caucus at 8. And we were trying to trying to listen in every piece we can so unfortunately i missed it we did go back and uh watch the whole thing um that night so we we enjoyed that there wasn't any interruptions from uh people around the country the comments it was, it was difficult to keep up if you weren't i, I mean if you weren't hosting that day and yeah. i mean i was just trying to keep up and the the comments were coming quicker than um they were coming so fast you couldn't read them <laughs> yeah that literally was it. It, it, you could not read it them. just goes to show how how bad social media has become mm-hmm. half those people on and maybe i don't know them but half the people have no idea what they were talking about and just was throwing stuff out there so um it it, it was crazy Mike, let's talk about your small business, Bill. Uh, we spoke about this before you went to Charleston, that this was one of your yeah. goals. you got some pretty heavy hitter co-signers on this thing, including the House Majority Leader, uh, Eric oh, Halsorder. I've got, I got to tell you, I, I went up to uh, the secretary, uh, the, 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 uh, his, his uh, staff member. I was like, how do I get uh, the speaker? And he says, we've got six minutes. He's up there. Go give me a best pitch. And so I walked up to the, the top of the <laughs> thing where the speaker is. I'm, all, you know me, did, Rob. I get pretty, I get pretty nervous. And did you have I'm to walk sweaty. in? Did you have to walk in on your knees, Mike? I, I felt like I was going and asking Dad for five bucks to go buy something or something. <laughs> but um, I asked him. I said, you know, uh, I'd like you to read this. I'm not asking you to sponsor it or anything, but I'd like you to read this. Tell me what you think. And he read it, and uh, he said, I'd like to. Uh, put my name on this and I was like wow heck yeah so then once I got that I just went down the list of okay who do I want and I just went and shot for the stars now the verse before we get into the description of the bill tell me the rest of the conversation once the speaker found out that you owned a radio station in Martinsburg <laughs> so um he, he did say that, um, he, he said, you know, I really enjoy uh, going on with Rob. Um, and, and then he gave you an extremely good com- compliment. But I, I don't want to tell people too much because, you know, you might ask for a raise. But he <laughs> said he enjoys going on your show more than anybody because you and your co-hosts are the most informed. So um, that was a very nice compliment. And obviously, um, you know, he, he he mentioned Bill and you and everybody by name, so yeah. um, I thought that was pretty cool. You know, he said that to us over air as well, that he really enjoyed Did not mention me. He just said how much yeah. he enjoyed you being, uh, being on your show. So. Yeah. He, he implied you, though, Bill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he hinted at Maria. Definitely hinted at Maria. I don't know about that. So let's talk about this bill. What does the bill do for small businesses, Mike? So, uh, you know, I've been talking about this for a while. Uh, the biggest obstacle to small business, and when I talk about small business, I'm talking about 15 employees or less, um, to opening or expanding is that first uh, that first employee, that first payroll that you actually have to pay payroll tax on. So what this bill essentially does for the next three years, new businesses in West Virginia will be able to ask for a payroll tax credit. Um, and it's only on your first five employees, and it's a staggered rate. So the first year, you may get the first employee 100%. Next year, it's 75%. Next year, it's 50%. Um, and it's staggered for those five employees. And then it sunsets in three years, so the economic development uh, uh, department can run those numbers and see what kind of revenue the, this bill generates because you're only receiving the the credit on the portion that the business pays. So the, the employee will still pay his payroll tax and the, you know, the taxes they pay. Um, but I see it as a you know a small contractor maybe moving somebody from paying cash or 1099 to hey you know what there's an incentive for me to put people on payroll and, and I, I think. You know, that was kind of my idea during, while I was campaigning, and I thought, well, heck, let's do it. And it, it, when I first crafted it through bill writing, it came back and said you get 100% of all your employees' wages back. I was like, well, no, 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 that's not what I wanted. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it came out really nice, and uh, I, I think everybody I've talked to has been supporting it. Now, I don't know. Obviously, the chair of economic development has to uh, – 
put it on the agenda, and then of course it's got to go through finance, and then it's got to go across the across the way to the West Wing, and see if I can't get any senators uh, to to push it through too. So it's still a long way from from getting anywhere. You got Wayne Clark locally, along with John Hardy and Eric Halsey. Yeah, Wayne's the Wayne's the vice chair of. Uh, Economic development, so I thought that was important mm-hmm. to, to have somebody there. Uh, John Hardy, obviously, is the vice chair of finance. Um, yep. so more Capito important. also signed it. More Capito is the chair of judiciary, um, so you obviously got a great name you, um, you got, and a leader. Obviously, you said the speaker, Hanshaw. You got uh, also Scaff, uh, Doug Scaff signed it. Mike Height had better signed than he's your buddy. <laughs> You know, I, it was filling up so fast, and, and I thought, man, I, if I don't ask Height, he is going to pommel me, um, <laughs> because I've talked about this, and you know, he's really <laughs> helped me with the, the, the wording of it. Um, so I had one spot left, and I found him at the, the back of the chamber. I was like, hey, if you want on this, you need on this now. <laughs> Mike, is this... So he was the last one to sign. Is this for just new businesses, or does it include old businesses? No, it's for new businesses, Bill. I, the, the issue, if you do it for... Can, like businesses that are open now, it, the, the the price tag is just too much. I mean, you, you, small businesses make up a lot of um, uh, our, our income. So this is more of a pilot program for new businesses to create new jobs and new uh, revenue for West Virginia. Yeah. So um, I'm going to switch gears a little bit, Mike. Sure. Talk a little bit. You're on um, the education committee, if I'm not mistaken, I am. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. What about um, what about what's coming through there? What are you seeing? What's uh, what's your focus? What do you think has a chance? Um, all of that. So there's a there's a couple of things. There's a lot of things going through education. It's one of the the, the committees I'm most. Uh, I'm most excited to go to because uh, the chair runs the meeting very well, and we run a lot of bills. Um, a lot of these bills do have financial implications, so they've got to go to another committee. But I, I do like the aids for the first and the second. Uh, we did aids for first, second, and third. I, I think finance is going to cut that back a little. That was a good one that passed through committee. Uh, we did. Uh, we're running a um, a salary bill that would take the median incomes of the states around us so it's a substantial um increase for new teachers uh we're talking about ten thousand dollars um and i I co-sponsored that too um and it it incrementally goes up um you heard the governor um yesterday i believe uh increased all cps workers up to a minimum salary of fifty thousand um which i thought was a you know that's great for the eastern panels but he, he specifically mentioned jefferson morgan and berkeley county Got it. Yeah. So, but there are some there are some things coming through education. I'm going to get a lot of uh, attention. I'll just put it that way. Uh, the so, Mike, you've been there about two weeks now, but I've not, uh, I've not I've seen little evidence of you solving our Highway Nine West problem going through. <laughs> so actually, I had dinner and talked to somebody about that last night. Um, Bill and, and we, we we've got an Eastern Panhandle Caucus, and everybody's kind of talking about it. The thing is, it, it's not on the books, right? So it's three, five years out. They're yes. planning. So it's something that we, we are all eight of us in the house are talking to um, Department of Highways and trying to get something. We um, get something done. I know that they keep mentioning that. Oh, well, Berkeley Springs got it. Well, that's not Berkeley County. Um, so I, I don't think they have an answer, Bill. I, I really don't. Um, they haven't even acquired land or right of ways yet. Um, it, it, it's, it's one of those things that. I don't even see the plan. Yeah, well, it's such a big project, uh, and mm-hmm. it's going to take years for it to be finished. So you put those two together, it's easy to kick any serious planning down the down the road a ways. Uh-huh. And this is what I think's happened over the last several years. They they say, yeah, we're thinking about it, but there's no serious effort to come up with a plan. So I hopefully you folks, the caucus, <laughs> will be able to get some seriousness applied to this. Major, major. Yeah, I think everybody down here um, is. It, they truly know that that project has to get. Yeah. It's got to yeah. get in the works uh, ASAP. Otherwise, we're going to be in trouble. Mike, we appear to be at a stalemate between the House and the Senate regarding this personal income tax plan that could ramp up to fifty percent at some point along the way. What are you hearing down right. there? So, um, obviously, I you know I see Craig maybe twice a week in the evening or something like that. Um, you guys probably talk to him more than than I do. I, you know, 
Jason doesn't say much uh, when I talk to him and when we give him heck um, and trying to find out. I saw Craig had uh, something in the news yesterday about that they, they want to do the 50 right up front. So I haven't, you know, I'm not in those those leadership meetings with them. I hope they can come up with something and we can get this done. That's all I, you know, I just, it, it, I don't care who gets credit. As long as as long as long we get the income tax uh, reduction done, I'll be happy. Do you detect any visible frustration amongst leadership in the House over this? Um, I, I don't know if you call it frustration, but the, the, they're starting to ask questions and, you know, to inform us like we are in talk. So that they're meeting um, as we speak. How do you think the uh, governor's traveling road show will sit with the Senate leadership? <laughs> About as well as it did uh, <laughs> when he did. I, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I hope it doesn't hinder progress. I noticed that Berkeley County or Martinsburg isn't on the first swing of the tour. Um, we were noticeably left out. Maybe not. Mm-hmm. I'm a conspiracy well, remember, theorist. Well, we did. We yeah. were one of the few counties, if not the only one, to vote yes for all. That's of those right. Members. So and that that could have something to do with it. And you got to give our audience and our. Um, the, the, the people of the panel are very informed when it comes to politics and uh, what's going on down here in Charleston. You'd, you'd be, it, it, it's very uh, surprising how well-informed our audience is. You know, Jeff Haddix made mention of that in the comments section today when we were talking about that just earlier. So, a well-informed audience, which is factual. Well, I, and, you know, I, I give you guys credit for that and what we do. We're really trying to bring... You know, we try and bring Charleston to to to, West, to to the Eastern Panhandle to try and keep people informed. I think our uh, our citizens are informed of what goes down up on down here in Charleston. So um, we have great representation down here. So um, I think that's a credit to them. What kind of progress, if any, are you making on any type of way of dealing with the SSAC? As it's a private organization, obviously. Yes. So um, I have been given a number of bills, and there is a number of us and a number of people that are um, wanting me to run a couple of WVSSAC bills. I, it, it, I've got to be very careful. You know, obviously, <laughs> um, it, it's one of those things where you want to fix a problem, but you want to start a whole other problem, me too. So, um, so we're we're addressing that in, uh, and, and we'll hear from them. Um, I know there's a couple in education that are trying to control some of the rules, um, transfers, things like that. Um, so you know, we, can, we can make laws that can create rules that will help West Virginia in, in rating in the WSSAC. By the way, County Clerk Tony Petrucci just texted me and said the governor will be here Tuesday at the old courthouse at noon, oh. second floor, much like he was for the amendment tour that okay. he went on. Then I, was, so, I okay. stand corrected. I heard it somewhere the three cities he was going to and didn't mention Martinsburg so yeah, I think you, you know he, he's mentioned locality pay he, he gave the the Jefferson Morgan and Berkeley the raises for the CPS workers um, I think he found some 82 million dollars or something in DHHR um, so he, he understands the problem and I gotta agree with him here um, he seems to be doing the right thing I mean, he wants to go out with a bang yeah, he implies, at least maybe reading between the lines, uh, that uh, with DHHR, he thinks it's just uh, a leadership, better leadership will, is the solution, whereas it, uh, the legislators tend to believe the solution is breaking into th- three different groups. Do you have a sense of uh, who's right on that, Mike? Well, I'm not on health. Um, I, I, I have talked with Height because he is on that um, committee. Um, I still think the th- I think you've got to be careful when you split them into three so you don't c- create three giant bureaucracies that just grow on themselves. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it's still going to be under one person. There'll be a chief operating officer and you'll have three people underneath. Um, but I, I no. think if they can rein in some of their departments and their spending, I think you can you could streamline it and do much better. I'm not sure you're right on that, Mike. I, I don't think it's going to be three separate organizations under one CEO. I think there's going to be three different CEOs or administrators. No, no. It's going to be one COO. COO. So then, yeah. so then that's basically just a, uh, a leadership change. 
And, and again, I'm not in those meetings. I'm just uh, I've, I've seen some stuff, and that's the way I've seen it structured. I may be wrong, um, but I'll wait till I see something before I can really speak to it um, in detail. Yeah. Um, I can really talk on education and, and economic development sure, tourism. Sure. Um, I know we did. Uh, we got a bill that's coming up, changing the com- county council to commission. Um, there's no, I'm on like 17 bills right now. So, um, switching gears, but not really. Yeah. So, campus carry passed in the Senate, moves to the House. Um, prediction that it will, um, you know, it will probably sail through. Um, we've had a letter written by the president of Shepherd University um, opposing that. What's your mm-hmm. What's your take on that? Are you going to vote for it? Oh, uh- I think there's a lot of appetite for that here in this building. Um, I know West WVU and Marshall have been, you know, informed and kind of they've helped craft that bill. Uh, we do have in committee today a teacher carry uh, bill um, that's been that's coming to to vote that will be going to through education today. Um, I haven't. I, I, I'm in support of both at, at this point. I really am, and I, you know, um, I think campus carry the, the way it's crafted with the, the background checks and things like that. Um, I do think it'll probably sail through uh, both houses, both uh, Senate and the House, pretty easily. I think you're right, Mike. It will sail through, even though I th- I disagree with you. I don't think uh, uh, Marshall and WVU were were in favor of it. They just realized they can no longer fight it successfully. But let me finish very quick. Show, tell me where the hypocrisy lies that we uh, we have carry on college campuses, but do not have carry in our government buildings well and that's coming too i think that's all part of the same thing i think you're going to see this session i think you're going to see campus carry i think you're going to see capital carry and i think you're going to see teacher carry um all be addressed um because i I do think it's hypocritical if you (laughs) you say you can't carry on a school but then you can you can't you know you can carry out of school and then you can't carry at the capital i I think that's ridiculous So a couple of years ago, there was an awful, and you weren't there at the time, obviously, there was an awful Mm -hmm. lot of complaints about the governor's lack of a physical presence in the Capitol, uh, whether it was at the mansion or in the office at work during the day. When he's not out visiting the different cities of the state to talk about, in this particular case, one thing or another, whatever, whatever he's, you know, for or against, is he a presence? Do you see him around the Capitol? (laughs) Well, my parking spot is right outside his house, so... Um, I arrive about 7.30 every day, and I, I know during the state of the state addresses, uh, state police cars are parked in his, his thing when he's there. Um, I have not seen anybody in that house since. <laughs> um, but that's not to say he's not there. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, I literally park right outside his house. It's, it doesn't seem to be an issue any longer, meaning that people have either accepted the fact that he's just not going to be fit, uh, present yeah. or, or he actually Yeah, is. I mean, it's not, it's, not the, it's not the cross you want to die on. It, it, it just doesn't seem like a battle worth fighting to me. All right. Uh, you, you've seen the house. If you were elected governor, would you live in it, Mike? Yes. I mean, it's decent. I prefer my house. <laughs> it's a nice house. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a nice house. Um, but, you know, you compare it to where he he lives at the Greenbrier. So, so yeah. Not the Greenbrier. Tough comparison. What do you have to do the rest yeah. of today? What are, you, what are you up to next? So I've got education this afternoon. That'll be a fun. Um, it's going to be a good one. Um, we, we've got lots of things coming, coming up on the agenda. Um, I've got session at 11. And... Uh, then I'll go down and walk the rotunda to see the the, the, the local. I think uh, look tourism was here yesterday. That was very cool. Um, so there'll be some people here today. It's always nice to talk to people. Is, Work on Highway Nine. Yeah. Like, highway Nine. Yeah. <laughs> is is the Nate Harmon situation getting any attention in Charleston, Mike? No, no, no. I mean, uh, I think I saw Nate on Thursday evening when he came down. They had a sheriff. Um, a resolution on Friday morning. I, I got to get to you know, take my picture with Nate up on the speaker saying um, I talked to him. Obviously, he's pretty stressed out. He hasn't had a very good week. Um, you know, I, I, it is what it is. Um, but I, I have not heard anybody besides the Eastern Panel Caucus who listened to you guys talk about it. Mike, have yourself a great day. Appreciate your time. We'll talk to you the same time next week. 
Thank you, uh, Mike. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much, guys. Thank mm-hmm. you, Mike. Stop yeah. being so nice. <laughs> <laughs> he is Delegate Mike Hornby, but around here we just call him the boss. <laughs>